Welcome to my Godot study notes. These study notes are meant to be quick with no fluff based on my current understanding of the topic, which could change in the future. Today's topic, 2D background image, basic. On the last video, we looked at some basic project settings such as config, run, boot splash, window, and texture. Please see this video if you wanna know more about that. One thing I found odd about the boot splash setting is that it affects the whole Godot game engine and not just the project you're working on. For now, I switched my boot splash settings back to default. If you like to do the same, the BG color is 24, 24, 24. You want to highlight the URL and then delete. And underneath the advanced settings, make the minimum display time to zero. Close the settings and then hit Control S to save. From what I can tell, there are two types of 2D backgrounds. Static backgrounds, which don't move, and parallax backgrounds that have motion and depth. Today, we're going to be talking about the static background. Let's open Krita. On the last video, I set my window size to be 720p, which is 1280 by 720. In Krita, let's do the same. So whatever I create in Krita will automatically match the Godot window size settings. Click content, turn the background opacity to zero, and number of layers are gonna be two. Click the create button at the bottom. When you first open Krita, your screen may look like this, with the background opacity blocks being very large and zoomed in. Also, your paintbrush may be very large or very small. Let's fix this. Over to the left is where your selection tools will be. Make sure that your paintbrush is selected. On my screen, you can see that my paintbrush is very large. At the top of your Krita screen, you will see the size of your paintbrush. Use this bar to make the brush smaller or larger. You can also use the bracket keys on your keyboard to do the same thing. Now use your middle mouse scroll wheel to zoom out a bit. Now go to settings, configure Krita, and click the grid settings. Change the size to about 10 pixels and click OK at the bottom of your screen. Full stop. You should not think of these steps as being the best way of going about this. I am doing this on purpose so that I can show you Krita as a game development tool. Let's continue. You will see on your screen that I have a folder with an image that I want to use as a background. However, this image is not the correct size. At the top of Krita, click File, then click Open, navigate to the folder that you have your image in, select it, and click Open. If need be, scroll out a bit so that you can see the whole image. At the top of Krita, click Image, then click Scale Image to New Size. Make sure there's a check mark underneath constrained proportions. Then under pixel dimensions, change the width to 1280 and the resolution to 300. As you can see, the size is not exactly correct yet. We'll fix that soon. Click OK to close. Now click File, Save As, rename this image. For me, I'm going to call it Edit BG, leaving the next screen at its defaults and click OK to close. In the top right corner of the image, click the big X to close. Now at the top of the screen, go under View and click show rulers. Now I'm going to open the folder with my edit BG image. To import an image into Krita as a layer, click and drag your image onto the transparent background and let go. Click insert as new layer and your image will now fill the workspace. At the top of Krita, click on image, then click trim image size. This will trim my image to the viewable size, which is 1280 by 720, while keeping the image scale correctly. This takes care of making the image a full 12 80 by 720, making it match the size that I set inside of Godot. Now let's make this image a little bit more interesting. Look at the layer panel. Make sure that the image layer is selected, then click duplicate layer icon. Double click the new layer and rename it blur. At the top of Krita, click on filter, go to blur and click on Gaussian blur. Keep the default settings and click OK. Make sure your paintbrush tool is selected and your soft eraser is selected as well. In this example, I will create a border of what I want to be in focus and leave blurred what I want to be out of focus. Now turn off the second layer so that you can see the border. Switch to the hard eraser, select the blur layer and erase everything under the border. This is a good time to make your paintbrush a lot larger. Now erase everything under the border and turn the second layer back on. Once done, right click the blur layer and choose to flatten the image. You now have an image that has a bit of depth of field. Now click File, Save As, choose PNG, and name your new image. I'm going to name mine Snow BG. Click Save, then click the default settings and click OK. Let's open up Godot 4.0. Here I'm dragging my new background image into the Godot file system. In the near future, I will start building a folder system, but for now we're just going to keep it simple. Let's make that background scene. At the top of Godot 4.0, click the plus icon. Click the 2D scene and rename it to Snow BG. Now add a Sprite 2D node by right-click 
clicking, then click add child node, or instead you can click the node and use the keyboard shortcut of control A to get the same result. Search Sprite 2D and click create. Now drag your basic background image into the inspector panel and drop it into the empty texture spot. Now with my Snow BG node selected, click on the grouping icon. This step will become more important in the near future. I like to call this the gluing icon because it groups, glues, and locks a scene together. Let's continue. Now click scene, save scene, and click the save button at the bottom. Now click the game on panel scene in Godot 4.0. Now from the Godot 4.0 file system, click and drag the Snow BG scene onto the stage. You will now notice that it fits the stage slash camera view perfectly because we match the settings in Krita to the settings in Godot 4.0. Now click play or press F5 on the keyboard to run the game. Now let's close the game and add back that splash screen. Go back to project, project settings, boot splash, make sure advanced settings is showing, put 300 milliseconds, click the folder icon, click your splash screen, click open, click close, click play or F5 to run the game. Now you should have a splash screen and a very basic background image showing inside of Godot 4.0. For a recap, you know how to restore the boot splash settings back to default. You were introduced to Krita as a possible game development tool and you now know at least one way to add a very basic background in Godot 4.0. This will conclude this video. All action, no fluff. Peace. I got some place that I gotta be. It won't leave. My friends, hey, get out of your comfort zone. It's a blessing in disguise. Get out of what you call home. Your name is written in the sky.